Good morning. I'm Ann McFetridge. I'm with the Permega Genetic Identity Group, and I'm here in Hamburg at the European Forensic DNA Working Group meeting, and I have the pleasure this morning of interviewing Dr. Lutz Roher uh, from the uh, University of Berlin, who's going to share some of the work that he's doing. So thank you so much for being with us. It's thank great you. to have you here. So. Um, I know a lot about you, but folks in our audience do not. So can you tell us a little bit more about you and the work that you're doing? Yeah, I'm what we call forensic geneticist. So I work in Berlin in the University Hospital in the Institute of Legal Medicine mm -hmm. and Forensic Sciences. Uh, I joined this institute very early in 1987. Um, and today I work... Um, half part in routine, so we, we are a contract lab of mm -hmm. the Berlin police, so we mm -hmm. do casework in large numbers. And secondly, I do, as a professor for forensic gen genetics, I do teaching and, and, um, and doing research within larger projects. Excellent. Well, we're so glad to have you with us presenting at this meeting. So one of the things that I like to ask folks is what inspired you to go into the forensics field? Of all the sciences to pursue, why forensics? Um, after my studies, I had a, a, a really big chance uh, to, to join a famous institute in Berlin, uh, the Institute of Legal Medicine at the Humboldt University. It was really famous, a large one, and it combines um, uh, the work for the courts with, with a lot of research. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as, a young, as a young assistant uh, scientist, I, I was um, given a chance to do DNA analysis mm -hmm. in the early time. So it was invented in 1986 mm -hmm. and, it, and we started in 1987. Oh, wow. so, so this um, uh, attracts me, of course, enormously mm -hmm. and was a, really a big chance. And it was a charismatic director and he, he offered me a world of, um, of, of chances. And, and uh, yes, and so I, I, I had no doubts that forensic, uh, forensic science or Forensic genetics mm -hmm. is something what I could could do the next mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. decades. Mm -hmm. And so you have the rest is history. <laughs> so, uh, what are you most excited about for the future of forensics? You know, we're hearing a lot this week about new technologies and new applications. But, what are you most excited about personally? I would say um, that uh, the development of DNA uh, from an pure evidence uh, to an investigative tool. Mm -hmm. that, is, uh, mm -hmm. that is what I think is uh, what we currently um, see. And um, it is uh, a long way and hard way, uh, technical challenges, but also um, other challenges, legal challenges, um, procedural challenges. Um, but I think this is the most exciting thing to, to, um, to have DNA um, uh, early on as an, invest, an investigation tool for the police. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. I agree. So um, I consider you a rock star of YSTRs, and you have a list of accomplishments uh, that's quite long. So are there two or three of those that you're most proud of that you'd like to share? Uh, we, 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 by, by chance, we, we cloned the first uh, SDR on the Y chromosome, and mm. we used it in the same year for... Um, for in a case, in a, in a, in a rape and murder case, um, mm -hmm. um, and someone who was um, innocent was released from jail. So this is this was my my um, start uh, wow. with the Y chromosome, and yeah. of course um, the second big thing was uh, to organize um, out of the box uh, workshops um, uh, without any big com companies or mm -hmm. or or, or uh, bodies of societies behind mm -hmm. so we organized it simply for the sake of uh, of, of sharing the technique mm -hmm. this was in the middle of the 90s and from this um, workshops uh, a database arose which mm -hmm. which is now well known it it, mm -hmm. it is the YHRD which which has is a kind of um, um, large reservoir of data of of, of, of scientists working in, in, in forensic mm -hmm. in forensic uh, labs and um, in it's more than 300 labs and, and they share data and I think mm -hmm. this is a spirit um, which we created in the middle of the, mm -hmm. of the 90s and maybe it was a, a, the time which allows it and which is today more difficult but because of this spirit, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. It's quite the legacy, absolutely. So 
Um, there have to have been some challenges as well, though. So, you know, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome in the field? Uh, currently, we have a challenge to to um, to balance um, DNA as a as, as an investigative tool uh, with privacy issues and and mm -hmm. um, the needs of of, of of police investigation. So, mm -hmm. um, how to say the the process to to get in touch and 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 with lawmakers and with uh, policy, this mm -hmm. is really really challenging and mm -hmm. and sometimes very frustrating. And um, I mean, this is not my personal um, um, my, my personal project, but it's mm -hmm. many people um, working in the field are involved somehow in the discussion, mm -hmm. and we see what the policy and the lawmakers are doing, and mm -hmm. we see what is needed, mm -hmm. and um, and this process is, at least at the beginning, mm -hmm. kind of frustrating mm -hmm. and challenging. Oh, absolutely. I think that's a, a global issue. So absolutely. my last question for you is, we're quite excited to have you presenting this week at the meetings. Can you share with us a little bit about what you're going to be presenting on this morning? Yeah, we, uh, we for, for years, uh, we, we have um, um, interest in, in uh, Constructing or reconstructing the ancestry of of an of an unknown DNA donor. So mm -hmm. for the police, is, I think it's it's kind of very important to mm -hmm. to to know possibly the nationality or the geographic affiliation of of a person. And this is very ex interesting because it touches fields like evolutionary biology, sure. anthropology. Um, and so on, uh, population genetics, and so I try to present three cases um, uh, in a in a time span between 2000 and 2019. So um, out of some dozens of cases, we, I present three, which try to illustrate where I try to illustrate um, how compli complicated this is, this kind of reconstruction of ancestry is, but also how helpful it could be for the police. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out today. I'm really looking forward to your presentation. So um, appreciate it and thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.